gamble with their robot Operation Orange are playing red. And taking yellow, Guilford High School from New Hampshire is teamed with Avid Thermal Technologies. We'll keep an eye on Dan Gill as well, the human ball thrower for Guilford. His performance at a pre-competition scrimmage, the New England Tournament, won a special commendation. Three, two, one, go! Thank you, Woody. Each of these teams is undefeated so far. See the ball come flying in from the right side? That's Mr. Gill taking aim at the opponent's large ball. That was Walnut Hill's five-pointer. There he is again, winding up and delivers a strike. That takes care of Clinton's five-point ball. Guilford and Clinton hit the goal at the same time to dump their three-point balls. The Walnut Hills drivers maneuvering their robot to drop in a 10-pointer, and it is down. The fans digging that. As Guilford tries to ram a large yellow ball through the side of the goal, Clinton's, they grab the blue with the suction cup, and that's down and in. Here's Guilford playing to their strength, handing off to Mr. Gill. It's up, it's, you gotta be, oh, in and out, that was close. Clinton's suction cup has grabbed the large blue ball there. Walnut Hill gets a red, Clinton scores. That's thumbs up from uh, head coach Lisa Sandberg. Walnut Hill scores their 10-pointer as another Hail Mary from Guilford sails across the field. That was a terrific game. We'll see who moves on when we come back. And we'll take a look at one team's high-tech solution to what they hope will be the 1996 U.S. First Championship machine. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Dan Debenham along with Ann Craig. The results are in for that last round, and by referee's decision, the win goes to the Procter & Gamble Walnut Hills team. Let's find out how they did it. Ann, fill us in. Hey. I'm standing here with Walnut Hills High School of Cincinnati, Ohio. Operation Orange is the name of their robot before they were having difficulty with the suction cup, but they just came out of the second round with a win. Tell Woo. me about that win. All right. Well, in the last couple of seconds, we put our second ball in, and uh, it came, it was a tie, and when it, in the case of a tie, they take the highest big ball in the goal, and we had it. It was a suction cup all the way. So it was a suction cup that yeah. gave you that yeah. win. All right, yeah. So what are you going to do to prepare for the next round that you have coming up? Just stay cool and doing keep, doing it, keep doing what we're doing now. Great luck, you guys. It looks like you're heading to a victory, and I wish you continued success. Thank you. Now back to you, Dan. Thanks, Ann, and stay cool yourself. That suction cup worked great, but we've seen plenty of other great designs in the contest so far, too. Earlier, we checked in with teams across the U.S. to see how they came up with their designs. In the Fort Lauderdale suburb of Plantation, we visited Dillard High School, famous for its athletic prowess and its magnet program, specializing in computer technology. With guidance from Motorola, plus a software program made available by Autodesk to all U.S. First teams, these students are taking their design process to the third dimension. We actually did not know how to use this program at first in the beginning of the year, but after two months we actually learned how to use it. To see like a more size, all three, three dimensions of a picture, it's, it's exciting because you can do a lot more with your drawing. We would go to the machine shop and create actual prototypes once this model is done. And we would test and see how well they work. What this one does is it rolls it around the back side and then moves it up onto a conveyor system that would carry it into the holding area. Well, we found that uh, some things we, worked and some things didn't. Pretty much. And after weeks of trial and error, the Dillard High School team came up with their final design. Well, we basically altered our scooping mechanism because we found out that it, um, the way we had it was taking up too much space. We also altered our uh, our mechanism. It's uh, very simple. It just uh, goes down and compresses on the ball and lifts it up. Very simple design. Good job, guys. Great job. Good job. Work, Alan. All right. Well, let's see if all that high tech pays off for Dillard High School and Motorola in our next round here. Going after the red balls is Nashua High School, partnered with Sanders Corporation. They won the U.S. First New England tournament held three weeks ago. One of their strengths is their student coach, Nyla Marrera. Well, my main role is to watch the other machines and make sure that they don't hurt our machine, that they don't beat our machine, and that we deal with them in a strategic manner. Um, basically, I love it because it's a way to really, to really be involved, to really be out on the field all the time, to feel where the action is. This program has really changed my outlook on the working world. You see where you can help in the real world by seeing where you can help with the team. I think we have a really good chance of winning. 
Well, we'll see Nyla's team in action against the Dillard Motorola team and their computer-designed arms going for the blue balls. Yellow this round is Rolling Meadows Wheeling High School, also partnered with Motorola. Motorola sponsors three teams here today. This robot, Wild Stang, collects its small balls in a tie-dye bag. You gotta love that. With one loss apiece, all three teams are in a must-win situation. Two, one, go! Ah, the familiar voice of Woody once again. Nashua is going for its red three-pointers while Dillard's after the blues and snags up one of Wild Stang's yellow balls. That'll be a freebie right there if it scores. Nashua gets defensive early, trying to block Wild Stang, but then uh, streaks around to the goal to drop off. It's red three-pointers. Dillard's drivers maneuver their robot for the drop, and in goes their load of blues, including Wild Stang's yellow ball there. Speaking of Wild Stang, here it comes with that tie-dyed bag of balls, and that's a slam dunk. The Rolling Meadows Wheeling High School's collaboration has made a Strong team as their Wild Stang gets its folding jaws just clamped around that large yellow ball. Dillard gets a large ball, but look at that! Wild Stang knocks it away. No brotherly love here between these two Motorola teams. Now Nashua gets a handle on a large red and loads it into that Space Age hoop of theirs, looking like their team should be sponsored by Otis Elevator. Up and up it goes. Wild Stang trying a desperate shove, but Nashua scores, looking like the Jerry Rice of robots. Now it's Nashua's turn for aggressive defense. Dillard gives as good as it gets there. While they're duking it out, Wild Stang moves in with a 10-point try, and Wild Stang, can they drop it in? And it slides out of the dragon's mouth, and down it goes. Nashua tries for another 10 points. Here's Dillard's folding arm trying to block it. If Dillard loses this one, they're out. That's the buzzer. Will Nashua's last big red attempt count? That's the question here. This is a close one, and it's all on the line for the Rolling Meadows and Wheeling High School team. We just try to help each other out. When it all works out as planned, it's pretty glorious, but sometimes when it doesn't happen or somebody hits you or something, it's like frustrating. Well, when we come back, we'll see the scores for this round and watch as two teams prepare for the contest with their own Hexagon Havoc scrimmage. Welcome back, everybody. Well, Nashua High School pulled out the win in that last round, eliminating Rolling Meadows, Wheeling, and Dillard. Nashua's Nyla Morera must be giving her team great coaching advice. However, it is a tough loss for the Dillard team. Nashua benefited from playing three weeks ago in the New England tournament. It let them and the other teams that took part experience the pressure of real competition. Our camera crews went to Round Lake, Illinois, where we found two teams who opted not to attend the New England tournament, creating instead some competition of their own. Here at the Baxter Healthcare Corporation, the Johnsburg High School team invited the Honeywell Microswitch Division and Freeport High School team to meet and play ball. Three, two, one. Both of these organizations are heavily involved in U.S. First. Honeywell sponsors three teams and Baxter, too. Until you actually put it into some level of competition, you never really know how it's going to perform. So we decided to put this together and have a mini competition on our own. These students have been uh, practicing over the last, uh, last week, driving this around. They're a little nervous, they're getting the butterflies out. Uh, this is the added variable here of the competition. This meet not only gives the drivers practice, it also is a chance to work out the kinks of their machines. Mike Runke from Honeywell helped the team build a better bumper, for instance. Uh, and what happened was our machine hit the lower rail on the court. We had a square corner here and it snapped the Roatel off because the Roatel tends to be a brittle material. So what we're doing is we're gonna cut a chamfer on it all the way down here so that when we do run up against the rail the next time, because we know we're gonna, we're gonna hit the plywood and not the row itself, and that should keep that from breaking on us. Today's scrimmage gave us a lot of experience. But we wouldn't get anywhere else. We couldn't get it in Freeport by ourselves. We had to go against another team. And we were real pleased with our machine, and we were real pleased with the whole team. The end result was that uh, it really showed us uh, strong points as well as weak points and things that we have to uh, bolster up to, to really make this machine go the distance. Yeah, but can MC and MIT professor Woody Flowers go the distance? That's the question. We'll see.